Hello. It's such a pleasure to be here today and spend the day with you. Uh, today it's also a big honor for me to be here and get the chance to talk about uh, stuff I care about. My name is Manuel Matusevic. I'm a front-end developer from Vienna and I work for the city of Vienna. I'm specialized in HTML, CSS and web accessibility. If you're interested in these topics, and I guess you are, um, you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter handle is mmatuso. I write about that stuff. Also, if you have questions, um, feel free to contact me. And if you want to tell me how shitty my talk was, uh, Twitter is the right place for hate, so um, you can also contact me there. The slides for this talk are already online on uh, bit.ly slash react minus tips if you want to follow along on your laptops. It's bit dot ly slash react minus tips. A friend of mine, Juho, asked me a few months ago if I wanted to talk about accessibility at a conference he's organizing at React Finland. And first I wasn't sure if I should say yes because I'm, I'm not a JavaScript pro, sorry, JavaScript pro. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, I have some experience with Vue and Angular, but I have no experience with React. Um, but then I decided to say yes because I thought it would be a great opportunity for me to learn something new and also a great opportunity to teach people about accessibility that probably don't know too much about it. So, like I said, I have no experience, on, um, almost no experience with React, so I went online and I asked people on Twitter, what would you want me to tell a room full of React developers about accessibility? And um, that's actually a um, picture from the conference from React Finland. And uh, people sent some links and some tips, uh, for example, Markus is also here today. Um, and I gathered all this and I did some research and I was able to uh, group all those things or the things that can get wrong when working with React or any single page applications into three major topics. And the first one is semantic HTML, who would have thought? Yeah, so that's the first thing that I identified. The second one is focus management and the uh, last one is routing. I only had 20 minutes for this talk, so I had to come up with a way of uh, communicating what I wanted to communicate as fast as possible, as understandable as possible, and also as actionable as possible. So I decided to present it in eight tips for more accessible React apps. Now, um, the thing is that some of the things I'm going to tell you um, might be right, some things could be done differently. So for some things I'm going to tell you there aren't best practices yet uh, when working with single page applications. So um, that might be a good topic for a session later to talk about single page applications and how to handle things that are different to uh, server side rendered websites. All right, let's start. Tip number one, create a sound document outline. There is a slight delay. Okay. Create a sound document outline. And what I mean by that is that you, you should start your page with an H1. H1? Okay, I'm not going to use the clicker. Uh, you, you should start your page with an H1, and if you have a large section, so a thematic grouping of contents, you use a H2. And if you have a subsection, H3, H4, and so on, and if you have another larger section, you use an H2 again. And this is really important for many reasons. One of them being that screen reader users don't necessarily just read contents on a page from top to bottom, but they have different ways of navigation. And one of them is navigation by heading. So they, get, they have shortcuts to jump directly to headings or, for example, in voiceover, they can list all the headings on the page and jump directly to this heading. And uh, I'm in voiceover here, and this is how this may look and sound like. Headings menu. Heading level one, React Finland. Heading level two, MCs. Heading level two, sponsors. Heading level three, gold sponsors. Heading level three, silver sponsors. Heading level three, bronze sponsors. And you can hear that the, uh, the, um, the screen reader doesn't just read the content of the heading, but also the level, level one, level two. And this is really important because it gives people context and it helps them understand the page hierarchy. Now, that's something that's hard to get right sometimes, especially when you're working with components, because, for example, an H2 in a component makes sense in one place, but it might uh, be wrong in another place when it's nested in another component, for example. 
Tenant UI has a solution for that. Tenant UI is an uh, access accessible React components library, and they have this uh, heading H component. If you um, use it in React, it will automatically be transformed to an H1. And if you have a section and you want an H2, you use the level boundary component, and if you put a heading in there, it will be automatically transformed to an H2. And if you have a subsection and so on, you will create another level boundary component, and this will be an H3. So what you see here in the end, when it's rendered, will be this, H1, H2, H3, H2. So you don't have to think about it. This component does it already for you. There are different ways of testing the document outline. One of my favorite ways is using a browser extension called, called Totally. It adds a nice little icon to your browser. If you click it, another icon will show up in the bottom left. And if you click this icon, you can annotate headings. And it will also show you if there are errors on your page, if there are uh, errors in your document outline. And it will also list the document outline. For example, here it starts with an H1, followed by many H4s, a lot of H4s, then H2, H4, and so on. So it's a nice way of showing your document outline. This is just one way. Another way is to use the W3C HTML validator. And I'm sure all of you are always validating your HTML documents. And you never forget that. Um, if you're using the validator, there is a checkbox in the bottom left that says show outline. And it will validate your HTML and it also will show you the outline of your website. So it's also a nice way of checking it. So in summary, create a document outline because it gives your document structure. It helps screen the users with navigation. It's also important for search engine optimization. And check out the UI, tenant UI headings component. Tip number two, hide content correctly. I'm on the React Finland website here because I was at the conference, so I wanted to show their document outline. And as you can see, it looks pretty nice. It starts with an H1, followed by many H2s and so on. It's almost perfect, if you ask me. There's just one thing I would like to fix. You can see um, at the bottom, there are three H2s, gold sponsors, silver sponsors, bronze sponsors. It's fine, but you could group those in a separate heading. So you can you could, could create an H2 that says sponsors and make those H3s just to group them. Um, now I guess the reason why there is no sponsors heading is because it hasn't, hasn't been considered in the design either. Because maybe the design already communicates this information that this is about sponsors because there are some other headings and there are logos and so on. But design shouldn't uh, dictate our outline, our document outline, the content should. So what we want here is to add a heading that's hidden from sighted users, but accessible to screen readers and to other machines, or other software and hardware. We can use HTML or CSS for that, but we can't use any of those properties. So no display none, no visibility hidden, and we can't use the hidden attribute because if we use uh, one of those, um, the element will be removed from the accessibility tree, making it inaccessible. We have to do a bit more to get that right. So a combination of many properties, this is just one uh, way of hiding content accessibly. But yeah, you have to combine a few properties in CSS to make content still accessible to screen reader users, but hidden from, uh, visually hidden. But if we do that, we can add a, add a heading, uh, apply this class. It's in the content, it's still accessible, but not visible. Of course, you, don't, uh, you, you can't just use this with headings, uh, but for example, also if you have an icon button, so a button where there's just an icon inside, like a save button with a floppy disk or whatever, and if you want to make it accessible, there also has to be text. You can't use the alt attribute with a SVG. Of course, you can use the title. Um, but you can also just add a span, for example, with this class and the text content, and uh, this way making it accessible. React people like components, so you can uh, create, you could create the tiny component just for that, a visually hidden component that does exactly that, wrap an item in a span or whatever, and apply this styling. Or you can use uh, this visually hidden component provided by the Reach UI uh, library. So in summary, don't use display none, visibility hidden, or the hidden attributes um, because they remove content from the accessibility tree. Each item that provides information also need a, needs a textual, textual representation in your documents. Yeah. Tip number three is very controversial. Uh, the statement I'm going to um, make now is very controversial. A lot of people get angry when you say, use button if you need a button. 
But it actually makes sense to use the button, the HTML5 button element, and here's why. You can see a, a nice little button here on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side is the code for this button. I'm using the HTML5 button element, and I'm attaching a click event to this button. Now, if I click it, you can see that an alert pops up. Nice. If I press tab, and I focus it, and I press enter, the alert pops up again. I focus it again, press space, and you can see the alert. It's accessible to mouse users, to keyboard users, to screen reader users. Super nice. Now we have the same button. It, ex it looks exactly the same. I know this is really hard to get right to make a button look the same in um, many different browsers. Uh, but this time I'm using a div instead of the button element. I click the button. The alert pops up. It's awesome. I press tab. Nothing happens because a div isn't focusable by default. Of course, I could add the tab index attribute to make it focusable, but if I press enter or space, nothing will happen because we only get these key events for free with the button element. So if you need a button, use the button element because it's focusable by default. Uh, it comes with the key events for free and it's semantic. It provides the information that it is a button and the div is just generic text. If you, want to, uh, if you want to learn more about buttons, uh, I can suggest the video uh, by Rob Dodson called Just Use Button. Very controversial title. And another video by Marcy Sutton, The Links versus, versus Button Showdown, where she explains um, when you should use a button and when the link in 45 minutes. So it takes 45 minutes. Um, but it's, it's, it's a really, really great uh, talk. Tip number four, use fragments to avoid invalid HTML. In React, uh, if you have a component, uh, the component must only return a single element. So if you have multiple elements, you have to wrap them in a wrapper element, for example, a div. And sometimes this might cause um, invalid HTML or it might even break your layout. And um, in order to fix that, React re introduced in version 16.2 a thing called fragments. Fragments let you group a list of children without adding extra nodes to the DOM. Here's an example. I have a table and a table row, and then inside this table row, I'm, uh, I'm adding a columns component. And the columns component looks like this. There are two table data cells, and since there are two, not just one, I have to wrap them, and I'm wrapping them in a div. What's rendered to the browser is this, a table, table row, and inside the table row is a direct child item, we have a div. But that's invalid HTML, and we want to avoid, evo um, avoid invalid HTML. So uh, we, we need to fix this. We don't want that. And a way to fix this in React is to replace the div with react.fragment. And the component will then only return the contents of this component and no extra nodes. So this is what we then get. A table, table row, and table data, no extra div. That's really nice. Use fragments to uh, avoid invalid HTML. It also reduces bloat because you don't have extra nodes in your document or in your components. And there's also a shorter syntax that you can check out on the React website in their docs. Tip number five. I'm really fast because Yoshi said we, we have to... Yeah, okay. Uh, tip number five. Take care of focus management. React applications continuously modify the DOM during runtime. And sometimes that leads to focus being lost or at being at uh, unexpected places. And when this happens, we have to make sure that we move focus in the right direction. Here's an example. Here's a button. It says show modal. And if I click this button, a modal window will pop up, show up. And um, if I use a keyboard, I can focus this button because I'm using the button element. And if I press enter, what I would expect is that focus is in this modal window, that I can access the contents in this modal window. Let's see what happens. So I focus it, I press enter, I press tab, and you can see that focus is behind this modal window. Because the way focus works, or tab order works, is the tab order follows DOM order. So from top to bottom. And I'm appending this modal window at the very bottom of the document, which is quite common. So what we want to do is to move focus from the button to the modal window when the user presses the button. Something like this. I press the button, modal window pops up, and the first item in this modal window is focused. That's what we want to do. Of course, when the user closes the modal window, we want to make sure that focus moves back to the button again. A way to do this in React is to create the so-called ref. You can use react.createRef. 
Then you have to uh, pass this ref using the ref attribute to whatever item you want to focus. In this example, the first item in the modal window, so the button. And this ref now gives us access to a reference to the node, to the button node. And then we can use the raw DOM API to focus this button using uh, the focus method. And that's it. Um, and this is really important. Here's an example. I'm on wise.com. Uh, or Weiss, the Austrian WISE uh, website. And if you uh, open the site, a modal window will pop up with uh, a cookie warning, whatever. And if I press tab or enter space, escape, whatever, I can't close it. They, they, uh, this is, it's completely inaccessible to me. And if I keep pressing tab because I'm annoyed and I'm angry, you can see that at some point the page moves because I'm in the back of this modal window and I'm accessing the contents behind this modal. So this website is not just useless, but also unusable. So, focus management is, is important, it's essential for keyboard users and uh, screen reader users, and you can take advantage of refs in React to manage focus. Of course, um, only do it when you see that certain parts in your UI aren't accessible. Don't overcomplicate things. There are already uh, solutions that work, uh, like uh, Ellie Dialog on GitHub, and there are a lot of there's a lot of information uh, in the React docs. Tip number six, make notifications accessible to everyone. This is pretty much my first uh, React app, a button. And if you click this button, uh, it says save, a notification will pop up that says save successfully. Let's try this with voiceover on macOS. Oh. Save button. You are currently on a button inside web content. To click this button, so what happened here is I focused the button, I pressed enter, whatever key, and then a notification showed up that says saved successfully, but it's only visible, it's not audible. So we have to communicate this information to the screen reader. And uh, a way to do this is to create a so-called live region. So I have a div with this notification, and in order to make it a live region, I have to add the role attribute with the value alert or status. And if an item has this role, or one of these roles, it will watch for changes. So uh, when the content changes in this element, it will communicate the changes to the screen reader. And this is how the, my, my awesome app now uh, looks and sounds like. Yeah, app, web content. Save, save successfully. You are currently on a button inside web content. So, it just, so now you don't just see the information, but you also hear it. So use role alert or status to create live regions and only use it for important information. Don't put a role on every item in your page or the body or whatever. It's only where you have to communicate important information that is otherwise not accessible. There's also a component that you can use, uh, again, by reach UI, an alert component. There's um, some other stuff on GitHub and a great article by Almero Stein that's called ARIA Live Regions in React with a lot of more details. <laughs> Tip number seven, and this is really important because it's uh, about routing. Um, a fundamental thing when you're browsing the web, uh, being able to jump from one side uh, to another side and also uh, know that something has happened when you do that, when you click a link. If you use a screen reader on a server-side rendered page uh, and you click a link, the page reloads, the title of the page is announced, and focuses on document. Uh, with single page applications, that's a bit different because we only have a single page. L let's see how that may look like. So here I have a simple web site with uh, three links, home, about, and blog. There is some content in the middle, and at the bottom there is another navigation with the same links. And if I now um, focus the About button and I click Enter, this is what happens. Visited link About. You are currently on a link. To click this link, press Control, Option, Space. So VoiceOver announces the title or the, the, the label of the link. And if I click it, the page changes. But again, this information that the page has changed isn't provided um, to the screen reader. That's the first issue, and uh, the second issue is that focus is still on the link. Um, it doesn't look like a problem here, but I'm going to show you what happens if I move from the top navigation down to the footer, and I click a link there. So I'm moving, I'm on the About page now, and I'm moving down to the footer navigation, and I'm pressing Blog. 
visited link visited link visited link blog you are currently on visited link about you are current So I'm clicking the links, the, the content changes, but I don't notice it. I have to scroll up to see that something has happened. Focus is still uh, at the bottom, and the screen reader doesn't provide me with the information that something has changed. In order to fix this, I'm using React Router here. Um, we again have to create a ref using react.createRef. Then I'm um, passing this ref to the section. The section is where my page content is, and I'm also using the tab index attribute to make it focusable. And then again, I'm using the focus method to focus it. And while I'm at it, I also change the document title because this is also something that doesn't change automatically. Now, what happens now is that if I press a link, focus will jump from the link to the, the section, to the page content, and voiceover will read everything. So not just the title of the page, whatever, but all the content within this section. And I'm not sure if this is the best way to do it. Some routers do that, um, but I'd rather just announce the title of the page. And maybe this is something we could talk about because uh, I did some research and also asked Markus, and there is no real best practice for single page applications when it comes to routing. Maybe we can uh, discuss this later. Mm, now, a way I'm doing this is that I'm adding an ID to the heading and I'm referencing this ID um, in the section using ARIA labeled by. So I'm now labeling the section with the content of the heading. And this is what happens if I try this website now. Visited link about about region. You are currently on a region inside web content. To exit this web area, press Control Option Shift. Visited link. Visited link. Blog region. You are current. Visited. Visit. Visited link ab about region. So now focus jumps from the link to the page contents, and the uh, uh, in voiceover announces the title of the page, and it also says region. It says region because I'm using the section element here. Like I said, I was using React Router here. There's another router called Reach Router that comes with accessibility out of the box or with, with all those things, focus management and announcing changes and so on. Um, it has been developed by Ryan Florence, who's quite popular in the, or famous in the React community. Check it out. Um, yeah. I don't know if it works perfectly fine. Uh, again, I don't have too much experience with React, but uh, it, it looks promising. So, announce page changes, use refs to manage focus. If you want to make something focusable that isn't by default, use the tab index attribute if you really need to. Um, yeah. And my last tip is test your React code automatically. Don't get me wrong, automatic testing isn't enough. You definitely have to test manually, but I would say it's a great start. There is a <coughs> tool called ReactX. It uses the X-Core accessibility testing library and it tests the rendered DOM. So not your JSX or whatever, but the rendered, uh, rendered HTML and it will show errors in your console of your dev tools. Just include it. You make sure that you only include it uh, in development, so you don't want it in production. You <coughs> call this function, you pass React, React DOM, and a delay in milliseconds, a timing delay in milli milliseconds, and then you get if there are errors, you get that uh, they show up in the console of your dev tools. For example, here it says there is a serious error, HTML element must have a language attribute. So I forgot to add a language attribute. And there are some moderate errors that also show in the console. That's really nice. Yeah, automatic testing is uh, great because it helps you identify low hanging fruits, but you definitely have to test manually. You can use React X for testing and ESLint plugin JSXA 11Y for uh, accessibility linting. And that's pretty much it. The only thing I want to show you is accessible apps by Markus Hermann. Uh, he's collecting a lot of best practices when it comes to working with uh, single page applications. I think he focuses on Vue, is that right? Yeah, Vue, and he's also writing articles about the topic, it's really important that we get as much information and best practices and patterns as possible because there isn't too much stuff um, available online. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Manuel. I think this was really interesting, but fast. Yeah, sorry. That was that was good. That was Sorry. fine. 
Uh, who of you heard something that sounded interesting that could make up for a session, uh, for example, to this afternoon? Okay, interesting. We have got, like, I think, let me look, 10 minutes to throw questions at Manuel. So, who's got a question? Just a second. Hi. Hi. Uh, fantastic slides. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and also good presentation. Um, anyway, uh, I'm pretty new to all the accessibility um, things around the internet, but I'm super interested. I'm sometimes working as a front-end developer and focusing on Vue and React. And my understanding of um, a single page apps and page changes is when you use the um, push state API of the browser, which most routers uh, do. Um, you pretty much trigger the browser behavior as if a page would change. Okay. How does this support accessibility? Uh, from my understanding, uh, at least the browser doesn't behave visibly different whether I use push state or an actual uh, reload of the page. But then also, I have, I have no idea if this is um, enough. But have you any experiences with, with push state? I'm API a push state expert. Um, <laughs> no, I have no idea. Um, but we can have a look at it uh, later together if you want to. Uh, we okay. can see how it behaves and what it does. Uh, sounds really interesting because uh, I haven't heard about push state. Maybe okay. does, it, does anyone else know the answer? Maybe with that push state in React, anyone? Because oh, okay. Gee. Is there any, any more questions? I heard that there is no focus management. <laughs> push, state is a primitive. push state is a primitive. It only changes the uh, history item. It does not do anything else than that. So you would have to wire up exactly the same thing that was explained. OK, thanks. Awesome. Any more questions? To this nice guy. Okay, I'm really sorry that if it was too fast, he was just nervous. I don't know. Um, okay, okay, thanks. I think it was good. Okay.